Right everyone, welcome back to here. Right, I'm going to do the scabbard for my Witcher sword that I made recently. So, what I've got for this is some three mil leather, already cut to the right length. Basically, it's the length of the blade and about an inch and a quarter. This is the pattern for the sheath, or the scabbard. You basically draw the blade on, and then you do a couple of measurements. So you do half the width of the blade, so in this case it would be one and a half centimetres. And then you do three eighths of an inch for the curling over of the lever, and then you do a quarter of an inch for the, the bit you're going to sew. So I need to now put this on here, mark it onto the lever, and cut that out. Right, so that's the lever cut out. I'm now putting a pattern on it, not sure how well you can see that. On the original sword in the game, it looks like it's got some kind of cloth material over the scabbard. I can't do that, so I'm going to imitate these patterns with basically a pen onto the lever. So it will be a sort of cross pattern, so the other lines will be this way, with some kind of indents in the middle. I'll show you a picture of that. So I'm just going to carry on now, just marking this along so it's the same. I'm just putting these lines on. So that's the pattern on, now I need to do the four little dots. The closest I've got is this pattern here. So what I'll be doing is with this bit of brown tape so I know it's the right way every time. I've already done one just here. Place this on. Hit it. And then that will create the pattern. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that in here. I'm going to have to go outside and do that there because it's going to be a lot of noise doing that in here. Right, so I've done the pattern. I could have shown you this, but I didn't bring this out. didn't bring the camera out until it was done. So at this point, I'm going to fold this over and glue it along that edge all the way down and then once that's dry I can either drill or punch the holes all the way along start sewing it so I'll probably just do a bit at a time I'm not sure if you can see that but just putting the glue on there I'm going to use one of these edging tools to just take off the edge. This is homemade, it's just not that good. But as you can see, you just take off the corner there. Right, so with one of these, I'm just going to mark the holes. I don't actually need to put the holes right through with this because I'm going to drill the holes through. This is, this is going to be nearly six mil of leather I'd have to push a needle through, so no thank you. Or these, these teeth aren't even six mil, so it wouldn't go all the way through anyway. So these just mark the holes to drill, if you can see that. So it's nice and uniform, better than doing it by eye. Move back indoors, I can keep this a lot cleaner that way um, and also it's freezing cold outside. So I'm going to sew this now. I won't do the saddle stitch with this but what I will be doing is just a standard sort of stitch. I double over the thread so it's uh, got a bit of sort of double strength if that makes sense and I will just be sewing in and out basically. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense to you. 
So in out, in out, all the way down, and then back to fill in any gaps. So yeah, this will take a while. Hopefully I've got enough to go all the way down one side. Doesn't matter if I don't. I can always just um, sort of restart it, if that makes sense. That's sewed all the way along. The top doesn't really matter how that looks anyway, because that's going to be covered with a copper collar and, and there will be a shape as well. I don't know how I'm going to do that though at the minute. What this now needs is to be wet formed and it will then be squashed down so that this bit is actually at the back. So it will be like that and then the, the sword will go in. So to wet form this you just need to soak it for, I can't remember how long, not very long. I'll add an annotation of how long to soak it for. You don't soak it very long and then you just sit it for a while, let the water soak in, then press it, which I'll show you. So this has had a good soak and I've actually already started flattening it slightly. I've tapped it with a hammer and then put a piece of wood on and then you, or you stand on it and you sort of shape it around and as you can see it's taking the shape nicely so the scabbard is nicely dried I'm going to try a bit of an experiment now I hope this works <laughs> as you know a lot of my stuff is experiments I'll take the sword out actually so there's the sword if you haven't seen it Scabbard is nicely straight, rigid. I'll right, put this away. Right, a lot of this work with this is a bit of an experiment. This dye is way too dark. I'm going to dye this now. So, what I've done, I've mixed this dark brown dye with some moonshine, which is obviously a very strong alcohol. So, hopefully, this should be a lot lighter and match the colour of what it should be because this is very dark so hopefully this will work and stain all right so let's have a look I have tested this and it did actually look okay I, I want it to try and cover because this I don't know how it's happened I think the blue has come out of the ink and stained the um, leather so hopefully this should cover that up a little bit but yeah this is a lot better color than i was hoping actually yeah that'll do that is an adequate brown not too dark it smells of moonshine as well I'm going to do the copper collar or throat whatever you call it and the shape the shape i'm just gonna have to do as i go along i have no idea how i'm gonna do that so this is probably going to be about an inch thick, go round, and I'm going to, hopefully if this works, drill two holes, put these rivets in so that the head is inside, and then rivet it on, and that will hold it on. If not, I may have to do it another way. So this should cut alright, reasonably easy, hopefully. Oh yeah, nice. Right, and this is four inches wide so this should perfectly fit around this well it'll be the right length anyway I just need to cut off a little bit off of each end right this bends quite nice actually might use copper more often to be honest so that looks like that's going to need about that much off right I've put a bit of aluminium in I am probably going to attempt to punch a hole in this. Oh, I've really done that. This is going to be quite difficult to do, I think. I may have to have the hole higher up, but just have one on each side. I don't think it matter that much. It'll still hold it on, it's just it won't be as much on each end. Because I reckon it'll be really difficult to get this in otherwise. So we'll take that off, drill the holes. And then see if I can get the pins in. 
Right, those are in. What I did, I used this to enlarge the hole slightly. What I need to do now is file away the backs of those because it's um, like bulged it out. That's that bit done. So now I just need to put the washers on. So that's one on that side. And you can get a proper setting tool for this. I don't actually have it, so I just have to use something that I've got. Right, screwdriver that holds bits will do it. Fits over the washer. Still fits right. Yep, yeah, still fits. So I will just smack those down as tight as possible and then cut the tips off. This is what I've come up with. Hopefully, this should be able to form around and make a nice little collar at the end looks like that might be slightly lopsided so it'd be like that but anyway we'll give it a go may need a bit of adjusting as i cut it but looks like that will be the basic shape right, i think that looks all right i'm quite happy with that you know considering how i'm making these very simple tools you're not even the right tools really yeah, I think that'll be alright. I'm going to fix it first and then I'll know it's more secure to shape it a bit better. Um, right, I reckon I'll do it. So, hopefully I should be able to hit straight through with this punch, get one of the rivets in, Sorry, this table is so bloody wobbly. Hit through, drill through, put a rivet in. All right, so the scab is looking pretty good to me. I am now going to dye this piece of leather to do the darker brown straps. One there, maybe one lower. I'll have a look on the original to see where that is. All right, let's put a bit of uh, wax on this. The only thing that's different now that it's done, now it's because I had to wet it, but I don't think I would have ever been ever to do the pattern now anyway. All of the pattern that I put on has gone. It's not on it anymore. That doesn't matter though. I'm perfectly happy with how it is. But yeah, the pattern where it's been wet has come out. So I'm going to put some wax on this now. This will just preserve the leather, stiffens it up a little bit as well, and shines it up. So I'm going to cover this in wax. And then afterwards, sort of give it a buff with this cloth. All right, there you go. One Witcher Zeriel sword. And I'll tell you what, I'm really bloody happy with that. That sheath is lovely. I'll definitely do that again. And the pattern is actually on there. If you look at it in certain angles, when it's polished, you can still see the pattern, so that is still there. The copper looks really good, yeah, the collar looks good, the, the shape looks good, because I wasn't sure what that was going to look like. You know, the back side's always going to be an uglier side anyway, but with this kind of scabbard, that sort of standard anyway, you know, that's a sort of ugly back side, and then you get the sort of nice front side. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Fits in absolutely lovely. The rivets don't scrape. Oh, that is lovely, I tell you. <laughs> I am really happy with this. Definitely going to do some more scabbards like that. A lot of work, but comes out really nice. So what you'll see now is some close-up HD pictures of this. All right. So don't forget to watch the rest of the video. I hope you enjoyed it.